Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be doing a, give me a second, there we go, a video about my daily system. So th this pile of garbage right here, and when I say pile of garbage, I kind of mean that because this is literally built from like parts that I don't consider good enough to use, you know, regularly for benchmarking, um, except like the heatsink. The heatsink is like, that's actually a nice heatsink. The, 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 like, I don't have a use for this style of test bench. I think this test bench for benching is actually really stupid. But for a daily system, I actually really like it. So this is a Lion Lee, Lion Lee I don't know, I'm not going to bother. But you get the idea who, who the manufacturer is. But uh, yeah, can't remember the name of this test bench. But um, yeah, my daily system actually used to live inside a normal, you know, case. But eventually like what, what was basically happening was that it was building up a ton of dust and I would just never clean it and now you might say but if you have an open air system like this it's going to build up dust faster yes but I can just carry the whole thing outside because this this up here is basically a carry handle so I can just carry the whole thing outside blasted with compressed air and then bring it right back in much easier to do maintenance on than doing the same thing with with like a tower system because then it's like okay well like, it's just more of a pain to deal with those, because they're just more, like, there's more stuff in the way when you're trying to clean them out, right? You have to just take off the side panels, and even then, like, the internal structure is, like, you have all the dust filters, you need to pull the dust filters, you need to clean the bloody, like, no, I take this thing outside, blast it with compressed air, bring it back in, done, right? It, much easier, you just have to unplug all of the cables, which um, I do have quite a lot of, so... Yeah, that's kind of the case. The other benefit to running an open air test bench like this is it's actually like it's quieter and cooler than my previous configuration. Probably because I didn't put a lot of effort into like configuring my case airflow. But I mean, you know, I, I still don't like I don't see a problem with running a system like this. I've run actually it's kind of funny, but if we go by all of the different systems I've dailyed, um, so I had, my very first system was inside a case, right? I think that's going to be true for everyone because when you first get into PC building, you build with a case because you think you need a case. So my first system had a case. My second system was a test bench, uh, but water-cooled. Um, and I, I still actually like, I still think that that was one of my favorite configurations. The thing is, um, so that was my first one. Um, well, second one, so was a test bench with water cooling. Then I had a third one, which was, similar test bench, bigger water cooling loop actually jammed into it. And that now is the benching system that I use when, whenever I'm like doing uh, water cooled, uh, whenever I have the CPU on water cooling, like custom water cooling in, in any live stream or benchmarking video I do, like on X299 or something, um, that uses that, that, basically that test bench. Now, um, uh, from there, you know, so so that was my third system. So again, a test bench with a water cooling loop, and that was great. Um, from that, I moved into a case, a Fantex case, and, and uh, from that, I moved into this. And in between that, I also had like an uh, like an option system that lived at my grandparents, uh, well, my grandma's house, um, and um, that one was technically in a case, but I ran it without the side panel, so it was basically like it was almost like it wasn't really closed because that was the best way because it was an overclocked FX6350 and that was just the best way to get the CPU to... Because the other thing is I, it was an FX6350 and like an R9290 or an R9290X because I would just like bring... When I went to my grandma's house, I would just bring my 290X from my daily system to my grandma's house and I'd game on the same card. So that, that was kind of ridiculous. But the thing is that 290X spat out so much heat that if you had the side panel on, it would roast the CPU because the CPU was on air cooling in that. Because um, I didn't want to bother with an... A like AIOs really aren't that great for like cost effective cooling. So I had just a Fantex dual tower heatsink. Um, and yeah, and I basically decided the only way to, to like keep that cool because even with an AIO, that would have probably been a bit of an issue. But yeah, like ultimately, I just decided, okay, to keep the 6350 happy, we're just going to run no side panel. It also lowered the temperatures for the 290X. So, you know, like that, that one ran with no side panel. Um, and so it was on, like honorarily, you could consider that a test bench. And now we have this thing as my daily system. And um, yeah, so let's talk a bit about the the... I th well, they're not really internals, but we'll talk about them, right? <laughs> the component tree. And I guess, 
Somebody might be wondering, like, what the hell is this? Well, the thing is, my phone used to live, like, right here under the monitor, but that would cause interference issues with audio when I was, when I'd be recording. So now it lives over there. And it used to, like, it, I, I just don't like the idea of having it on the, on the desk like this when there's, like, th this right here. So, yeah, I just decided it's going to live up here. So that's kind of that. And th there's the drawing tablet I use for all of the, all of the PCB breakdown videos. And anyway, back to the daily. So, we have an RX 580 Red Devil golden sample. It's not golden whatsoever. It's actually, in my opinion, it's really bad. The GPU core tops out at like 1460, 1470. Um, the memory is actually not bad. It goes up to like 2350 at 1750 timing strap. But, eh, nah, not, not great. Like, I would have honestly, like, I wanted like a 1500 plus core. And I got a 14, you know, 1470, like, yeah, no, that's really not great. For memory, uh, I have 32 gigs of RAM. It's not, you know, it's not matched. Um, so we have that. Uh, I did a video where I bought like a set of really cheap uh, Antec DDR4 that was like supposed to be B-Die. And it is B-Die. It's just, you know, OEM level trash B-Die. So, yeah, there's two sticks of that, and then there's the HyperX kit in there as well. The HyperX kit is 3600CL17. Right now, the, the system is, I think, running 3000 megahertz CL16 or something like that. So, yeah, really not amazing in terms of memory. Um, but, you know, I can't, like, I need, I wanted more capacity, and th this is just kind of the, like, this is the RAM that I had lying around that was, like, spare memory that I don't really need because I have some kits that are really nice and those I need for benchmarking, right? So <laughs> the bad memory goes into my daily system. Similarly, the CPU hiding under that uh, Dark Rock Top Flow 2. I think it's a Dark Rock Top Flow 2 from Be Quiet, the heatsink is. Um, so the CPU hiding under that is a Ryzen 7 1700 with a memory controller that is so degraded it will not get into Windows if you run, like, if you just set the system to restore defaults, it will not get into Windows because the SOC voltage is too low to keep the memory controller happy because of just how degraded it is. This thing needs at least 1.15 volts to, to fun basically to function like a normal CPU. Um, on the SOC. Well, at 1.1 volts, it'll get into Windows. It'll just also randomly crash for no reason if you do that. So but it doesn't spit out errors in memory tests. Like it just randomly locks up. So 1.15 volts for the SOC or this thing doesn't run, which is just blood, like, that's great. <laughs> that's exactly what you need from a daily system, right? Um, but yeah, it's my spare Ryzen 7. Well, it was my spare Ryzen 7 1700, and now it's just kind of like my daily 7, 7 uh, you know, daily 1700 because it's just so damn bad. Um, you may notice that I did swap the fans on the, the heatsink, and uh, these are Thermalrite TY143s. And the reason why I opted for these is, one, they're orange, and we all know how much I love the color orange, and B, these go to 2,500 RPM. So they basically go like twice as fast as, I, I think they're basically twice as fast as what Be Quiet shipped the heatsink with. I don't actually crank them all the way up to 2,500 RPM because even I will acknowledge that 2,500 RPM is loud. But 2,000 RPM I consider completely tolerable. And so, yeah, <laughs> it's just like, so there's, uh, you know, more airflow, more cooling, more better. So that's kind of why, why I swapped the fans out. The motherboard is an X370 Tai Chi. Um, which still has Plasti Dip on it from when I tried to. You can't. Oh no, you can. You can see a bit of the orange. Yeah, you can kind of see that. You know, like you can't see the labels on the capacitors. So yeah, the board's Plasti Dip. It runs fine like this. I've actually run uh, Plasti Dip motherboards a few times. The the main thing if you're gonna Plasti Dip, like if you're gonna run a Plasti Dip motherboard daily, you have to make sure that it's really overkill in the VRM department because obviously this ruins the motherboard's ability to like shed heat. Right, so yeah, um, <laughs> the definitely isn't doing the motherboard any thermal favors. But I had it plasti dipped because I tried to run LN2 on this board once, which was a terrible idea because it turns out this motherboard doesn't have one of the like. There's a few voltages that you absolutely need to be able to control on Ryzen in order to do any kind of LN2 overclocking. This motherboard doesn't have them, so yeah. Um, that was a terrible idea, and it didn't really go anywhere, but I haven't since been bothered to peel the Plasti Dip off. So that's just kind of stayed on there, though we really can't see it because there's a giant air cooler over it. If it had a water block, you could actually see it. And there's a, 
like I tried to do a sort of like pattern to it. So like this corner of the board's orange and then it sort of splashes into the CPU socket area, but you can't see that because there's a, there's a heatsink there. So yeah, that's, that's what's going on with the, um, like, um, that, that's the motherboard, the memory, the CPU, CPU cooler, GPU we've covered. Here we have the, the capture card and then we have more USB ports. So these are like, I think, yeah, one of these is the printer. One of these is the drawing tablet. Um, we have the phone. We've already looked at that. There's the situation with the IO and the only ports that aren't occupied are these two right there. <laughs> Cause, uh, yeah. But the thing is like, yeah, they're unoccupied, but they're in an inconvenient location. Cause if you're doing plastics or something, then I need them up front. Um, and the other thing is like, I'll actually, like I like to buy my music on CDs. Um, and so I also use the, the front, uh, USB ports for like, like the most populated this gets is like two flash sticks, a CD player, and then the phone. So, well, a DVD, re uh, DVD reader. Yeah. I think it's a reader. I don't remember. Like I <laughs> like something to read optical media, right? There. Anyway, so that's that's the actual sort of daily like so that's kind of the top half of it. And then down here, yeah, we're just gonna move down, right? Um power supply wise, we're looking at an Antec High Current Gamer 850 watt model. Um why did I get the, like this PSU is too big for this, right? We have a seven seven uh we have a seventeen hundred um at like three point eight gigahertz. The CPU is gonna pull like at most 180-ish watts, right? So that 850-watt PSU for barely a 200-watt CPU, terrible decision. The GPU can technically, I think, hit around 300, but you're not going to, like, even then, it's like 500 watts combined. So really, this should be on a 650-watt PSU. But the thing is, this PSU is a similar story to literally everything else in this system, right? The X370 Tai Chi is here because it's too, like, it's too awful a motherboard to use for anything else. Like, it's basically been sitting in its box until very recently. Like, my daily system used to have a gaming K5 from Gigabyte, but I just kind of got fed up with the, like, Gigabyte has put out some, well, yeah, like, that motherboard's got some really bad BIOS updates. Um, and I just kind of got sick and tired of dealing with them. So now it's on, a, so now the daily has a Tai Chi in it because the Tai Chi doesn't like it. It's not actually like the K5 with the right BIOS overclocks much better than this board. Or at least if you ignore the fact that the VRM on the K5 kind of sucks. But so if you had like a Ryzen 5 1600, the K5 is just straight up superior because you know, the 1600 doesn't put that much stress on the VRM, but this board sucks at memory overclocking. Um, and, but you know, that's not really a concern when it's in my daily system because the memory in here sucks anyway. So like, what's the motherboard going to do? It's, it's not like I, I, well, it could get worse, but you know, it can't really, like, it's already terrible. It's not really going to make much of a difference. Just the memory sticks themselves are already so bad that the motherboard really doesn't harm it that much more. So anyway, similar situation with the, the PSU where Originally, the power supply, actually, it's not bad. Like, the, the main use I had for this PSU was um, I basically wanted an extra power supply for benching because I think, um, I, yeah, I had one other power supply that, like, up and died on me. So I bought this PSU as a replacement, like, as a sort of short-term replacement. And, well, I've never gotten rid of it. And at some point, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to, because it used to be that my daily system would use, like, was like really high end and then I eventually decided that my daily like all of the parts in my that used to be in my day like I had an x99 daily system at one point um, and then I decided you know what I want all of those parts to be just like permanent benching parts including the 1600 watt g2 evga power supply and so you know I had to move all of those parts like so now I didn't have a PSU for what, what was going to be my daily system because it's like well the nice power supply is now busy doing benching things right so uh, yeah, I grabbed this thing because this didn't really have a purpose at that point, right? Because I have the 1600 watt G2 to do all of the benching things with. Um, and this moved into my daily system because it was just kind of available at the time. But um, the reason why I chose this PSU was basically when I was choosing this for as a benching power supply, my, my priorities were good plus 12 volts ripple, good 12 volts regulation, and 
no, I had no concern for any kind of efficiency or anything like that. So this is an 850 watt bronze PSU, right? And the thing is, um, it's too big for this system. And if I remember, like it's based on a Seasonic platform, which I, it, I think it's called a group regulated P, uh, design. I don't pay that much, like I read PSU reviews, I don't really pay that much attention to a lot of the terminology. Um, I basically just, you know, check the performance metrics, check the, that the reviewer thinks the internals are good and then go like, cool, I'm buying that. Um, but uh, with, with these, like they, they use a group regulated design. So as far as I know, if you actually really heavily load up the plus 12 volts rail and don't load up the five volts at the same time, the five volts goes out of spec um, as in being too high. So I think it ends, yeah. So five volts goes out of spec on this thing. Um, if you load it up in a certain specific way. Now, I didn't care about that because it's a benching power supply. I just need 12 volts to just be as, you know, tightly regulated as possible. So I was just like 12 volt rail, all the 12 volt rail and thank you very much. Um, but yeah, now it's in my daily system and it's just like, yeah, I really kind of wish this was like, ideally I'd have like a 650 watt PSU, not necessarily a higher efficiency one, right? Just a smaller one. Cause the thing is, this is just way too damn big. It's 850 Watts. Um, anyway, so that's the PSU down here. We have a three terabyte, uh, Western digital black. I've actually used up like, I think there's only a, like less than a terabyte of space left on that. Um, so yeah, that's like, uh, I'm probably, well, the thing is I'm actually like the, the other hard drive. Well, I also have a 500 gig SSD for my OS, right? Cause you can see there's two SATA cables and there's no optical drive built into this. So, um, yeah. Um, but the 500 gig SSD is actually running out of space completely. So I'm kind of thinking that, um, I might finally move from windows seven to windows 10 for my daily system. And when I do that, I'll do it with like a t one terabyte SSD. Um, cause I really don't feel like moving an operating system. I, it's not like I've done it before. It's not that hard. It's just like, I don't feel like doing it. So, or, or more like if I'm going to do some, something that drastic, a, a change to my system, I may as well also like straight up go to windows 10 at that point. So yeah, anyway, that's, that's the, um, pile of garbage that, that, you know, uh, records all the AHOC videos because even right now, th this cable right here is to the camera. So <laughs> right now it is recording itself, um, and, and me trash talking it. So good job, computer. You take all of my abuse <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Um, so that's the, that's, that's kind of the, the build that, you know, records all the videos and provides all my entertainment, um, in the form of like way too much Minecraft these days <laughs> right now. Anyway, um, and then here's the monitor configuration that I have going on. So this one is a TN panel. That one's IPS and you can see the pit, like the backlight's dying down there. So, and I don't think I'm going to replace it until the, like the image goes out because I've looked at like, I, I've looked at, uh, current prices for ultra wide monitors and they're just not cheap enough. <laughs> so I'm just like, okay, well, that, that might be somewhat annoying, but it's not eno annoying enough for me to send, spend another 300 quid on a new monitor. Cause it's not that bad. Like I can still use the damn thing. It's just like, yeah, that's, that's minorly annoying. And that's been there for a couple months at this point. So yeah, that's, that's, that sucks. But, uh, this one's also a TN and the idea behind, you know, having an IPS down the middle and then the TNs on the sides. And none of these is more than 75 Hertz. I think this one's a 75, that one's a 75. And this one I think is a 60, which might be why it's banding so badly because these two are like not in the same, uh, refresh rate as the camera, but, or, well, no, like they're not syncing up with the shutter speed of the camera properly. Cause those two are 75. And I think they might even be free. Like those two are actually free sync, but I'm not sure that it's enabled. Um, anyway, so the idea behind this, this setup was basically, this is the monitor I actually look at. So this is the one that has to look pretty when playing games. And then the ones on the sides are just to provide peripheral vision. And I play, you know, a decent amount of racing games, um, or at least, I used to, and for just, just for depth, this actually works really well. <laughs> just to give you a better like depth perception, at least for me, this, this really helps, uh, having it like that. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. And yeah, I have like awful gaps between the monitors, but 
the thing is, I don't pay attention to what's in the sides. I just need some like some kind of movement to to sort of add add to the immersion, I guess. I'm not really sure. I'm not really that into, you know, high immersion gaming or whatever. It's just like, yeah, this like I'm happy with it when I play games on it and that's all I care about, right? That that's kind of my approach to that. And yes, I do have a uh, like bunch of Lego cars just sitting under uh, sitting on top of those speakers. They're they're just there. That's kind of that. If anybody was wondering. And uh, yeah, I guess at this point we may as well look at the keyboard. So that's a Black Widow. I got it on sale. I think it was under a hundred. I think it was like seventy five quid. It doesn't have my preferred switch. It's the Razer Green, and I personally prefer a Razer Orange. Or just a cherry brown, because that's what, like, the razor orange is a knockoff of a cherry brown. But this was really cheap. And I just, like, as long as it's tactile, the clickiness is just kind of like, eh, whatever. I don't really care that much, but it has to be tactile. I think linear switches are, I don't get people who use linear switches. It's just like, what, the, whatever, right? Keyboards are our personal preference. And then I have a razor Naga as a mouse. So, yeah, that's... That's my daily system, and the, the motivation behind shooting this video was basically, well, a lot of people on the last PC Part Picker video were like, Buildzoid, you have zero aesthetic taste, and my response to that is, well, look at what I daily, right? Like, this doesn't even have, like, a steel box. It has, like, a, a bit, like, a steel frame is what I have, right? So... Yeah, I don't really do aesthetics. Also, the fans are held on with, like, just wire. Right? So, yeah. I, I really just... Aesthetics? What's that? <laughs> so, anyway. That is my daily system. And, uh, yeah. So, oh yeah. And th then there's the mic. And that is held in place by uh, this right here. And uh, then then it's basically sitting in this piece of foam right here. And it doesn't go anywhere because there's like some zip ties keeping it in place. So, yeah. Um, this is cheaper than buying a real mic stand because I already had the foam. <laughs> so, and I also like, I bought these to use these with webcams, with, with my web cameras, but I realized that I actually only really need to have one of them and the other camera can just live on my monitor and that's fine. So, yeah, I bought two and then I was like, oh, now this one's spare. So now it acts as a mic mount. So that's that's kind of that. Anyway, so that is the AHO. That's that's builds. That's my daily system. You know, the pile of garbage that delivers all of the AHOC content um, in all of its uh, in I guess glory, <laughs> depending on your de definition of that word. Um, anyway, yeah. So that's it for the video. So uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I'm just gonna like cover up the camera because I need to go hit the mouse and. Kind of, you're, you're not going to have anything to see. So yeah, like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. Actually, don't give me any su suggestions. This is my daily system. I don't care what you have to say about it, right? Like, it's awful and I know it. Um, but uh, yeah, what else was there? Yeah, so don't leave suggestions. And if you'd like to support uh, AHOC, which I guarantee you, none of the money that goes into the AHOC Patreon well, actually, no. I guess technically some of it does end end up in my daily system when I buy like parts for 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 review purposes, and then I'm like, okay, well, now I'm done using that, so I guess it can go in my daily system. But other than that, yeah, like it all goes straight into just making videos. So, yeah, not into my daily system because it's awful, isn't it? So, yeah, that's it for the video. And oh yeah, and there's also you know, so yeah, you can support me through Patreon. And then I also have a Teespring if you'd like to buy any AHOC merch like shirts, stickers, posters, socks. Um, yeah, like, they're literally socks. <laughs> AHOC socks are a thing. Um, and yeah, there's a link down in the description to that as well. So yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye. <laughs>